Death and taxes eventually catch us all. Pre-planning is wise in both instances. Please welcome Tony Camus. Thank you, David. <clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is Tony Camus. I am one of the senior funeral directors with uh, Byers Funeral Homes and also the marketing director. Today, I want to share with you some very valuable information about funeral service and things to look out for, especially when doing pre-planning. So, the big question that many people encounter when they start the pre-planning process is, which type of final disposition do I want to choose? Burial or cremation? There are other types of disposition, but these tend to be the two most selected types of disposition for final arrangements. So when folks select full body burial, they have their reasons for doing this, and I just want to touch on those for a moment. Typically, the reasons are that they have traditional values that they want to follow. Uh, this is something that's always been done in their family. It's what they're used to, uh, and so that's what they want to do. Sometimes it's also religious in, uh, in motivation in that their religion, their faith, primarily uh, teaches or follows these types of uh, uh, rituals, and so they want to follow the ritual of their faith. Some people choose full body burial because they feel like that that provides closure when they lose a loved one. In other words, that they have the ability to see their loved one prior to the burial. They have the viewing and the visitation with the body present, and many times the funeral service with the body present. Also, memorialization is important for many people because full body burial, when the body is placed, there's a monument or memorial placed at that point where that person's body or remains are placed. So to have the ability to go later after the burial and visit and remember and recall that person gives them uh, the opportunity to do that as well. And then finally, um, some people have cremation stigma. What I mean by that is, for various reasons, they just can't handle the idea of their body being cremated after death. And I typically see this with people that have uh, suffered a uh, situation where they were significantly burned. And after that experience, they say they don't want anything to do with cremation. So those are typically the main reasons why people will select full body burial. Cremation, on the other hand, Many people select that not as what many folks think is just cost, but convenience. And what I mean by that is when you do cremation, you can delay the final placement of those cremated remains because once the cremated remains are at that point, then there's not the urgency to bury them as it would be in full body type of burial. So cremation a lot of times allows families to delay ceremonies, services, or placement of cremated remains to a later date when it's more convenient for everyone to gather together. Cost is also a factor. Many times people select cremation arrangements without ceremony, and when you do that, that does reduce the cost of the cremation. Disposition options is another uh, reason why people select cremation. Uh, you can do anything from placement of the cremated remains in cemetery and ground and uh, columbarium niches. Many people choose to scatter. And even though scattering is allowed, it's typically prohibited on private and public lands. Uh, public, just because it is public and it's there for the enjoyment of everyone. Private lands, because those lands are owned by individuals and they may not want you scattering your loved one or yourself on their property. So you can, um, you can scatter, but it has to be on areas where it's allowed. Uh, burial stigma is another reason why people select cremation. They have a fear 
and I've heard this over the years, that they have a fear of being buried alive. And I usually tell them we take no one before their time. So it usually helps uh, uh, discourage that thought. And then last is environmental concerns. Uh, many environmentalists choose cremation. They feel like it's more ecologically and environmentally correct to do that. And uh, so they feel more comfortable with that uh, type of disposition to, in order to protect the environment. Uh, one thing I will <clears throat> share on the environmental concerns is that the University of Maryland did a study several years ago, and they wanted to compare the carbon footprint of a full body burial to that of a cremation in a cremation disposition. And to somewhat of their surprise, not mine, but to theirs, uh, they discovered that the carbon footprint for a cremation was actually larger than for a full body burial. And I say that kind of a, a little bit uh, uh, tongue in cheek because I've run crematories over the years. And in doing that, I always wondered how much natural gas we were always using to cremate a body versus the carbon footprint that was put forward by a full body burial. Because it does take a lot of natural gas or propane to do a cremation. So usually environmental concerns are a reason, but they're not always the, the best reasons to choose cremation. Pre-paying is another important part about pre-planning. Many people do prepay their funeral and cremation arrangements in advance, and it's a good idea to do that. But with most providers, unfortunately, they will not allow you to pre-plan without prepaying. Uh, I think it's become so uh, prevalent in our, um, our profession, our trade today, that most folks now expect when they pre-plan that they have to prepay. You can actually, with many funeral homes, pre-plan without prepaying. And I'll get into that in just a little bit. But when there's prepayment, the firm offering the prepayment pl program, they cannot accept the monies made payable to them. In other words, you can't write them a check or give them cash that goes into their operating account. The funds have to be escrowed, and there's two primarily uh, types of escrow accounts that are allowed by most states, including Florida. One is trust, and the other one is insurance. Now, with the trust, typically those programs are 100% refundable in the first 30 days. But after 30 days, those plans many times only provide for about 55% refund if you cancel for whatever reason. And that is where you have to really watch your contract to see what the refundability provisions are. Interest on the, on the funds remain with the provider at all times. Those are never transferred back to the purchaser or their estate or their heirs. And then cancellation could incur significant financial penalties, and that is the reduction of the principal return on what's been paid. Insurance, on the other hand, is 100% refundable in the first 30 days after you receive the policy. And usually there's a two to three week period between application and the time that the applicant receives the policy. So that actually gives you another 15 to 21 days of what we would call a free look period to make sure that it's what you want and that you don't have any regrets. And then after 30 days, as with any other insurance policy, the refund is based on policy cash surrender values if you cancel the policy. All interest and dividends stay in the policy until the death occurs. And then any overage and policy benefits are paid out to the beneficiary or the next of kin. But the nice thing about insurance is it's portable and all the money stay in the policy till death occurs. So in the event someone relocates outside the area or they choose another provider other than the one that they originally arranged with, all of the funds are transferable, including all the interest and all the dividends 
in the policy to a new provider. And the key on that too is the original seller of that plan does not collect if they don't provide services. Only the firm that provides services can collect on the plan. Things to watch out and to avoid in the pre-planning process <clears throat> are discounts for pay today. Many sellers will say, if you buy today, you will save X amount of dollars. Um, those discounts are usually always in place and they never go away. So you can prepay at any time and still achieve those discounts. So they're always there. Another thing is things promised to be provided but not put in writing. And this unfortunately occurs with many sellers who engage salespeople to sell their plans. Uh, they will tell people that, oh yes, we'll provide flowers, we'll provide a limousine, we'll provide all these extra benefits and services. But then when it comes time for those services to be provided, the um, person that's actually providing the at need, as we call it, services, has to explain to those survivors that those items are not included. So if they're not in writing and not in the contract or the agreement, they're not going to be provided. The other thing to watch out is some sellers do not have a local office or location they operate out of. And I've seen this here in our area where somebody may be selling a plan, but their office is located in South Florida. And so it begs the question, well, how do you handle taking care of these arrangements, number one, and number two, if it's cremation, where is that cremation taking place? So you need to find out, is there a local office or location and especially with cremation, where is that being done? And is that with uh, your company or is that with another company and in a shared facility? Another thing to watch out for is small payment amounts that have to be paid until death. In certain circumstances, this type of policy is typically called a uh, final expense policy. And in certain circumstances, it's not a bad plan it's just not the best plan on a prepayment basis because what happens is you continue to pay those monthly premiums until death occurs. There's no end to the premium. The death benefit does not usually increase in those plans and sometimes you can overpay the plan and pay more premium into the plan than what the final benefit is. So I tell folks to watch out for those because those are usually provided by insurance companies and they have actuaries and actuaries are there to make sure the insurance company wins, not that you win. So be careful of those final expense plans. Requirement to prepay to preplan is the final comment I want to make here. And that is with many sales companies, they require the prepayment to preplan because that's their business model. That's how they generate income to manage their business. Service companies, which many funeral homes fall into that category, they don't require prepayment to preplan if they're a service organization. Typically, you find the cremation companies in the sales organization category because that is part of their business model. They have to generate revenues through the sales in order to uh, continue their business. And that concludes my presentation, courtesy of Byers Funeral Home and Crematory of Lake and Sumter County. Thank you.